Hey, Chiefs Kingdom, the NFL trade deadline is six days away. And if you want the Chiefs to make a trade, well, like this video. I'm shooting for over 500 likes on today's show. I want the Chiefs to make a trade because this defense must improve. Like the video if you want them to make one as well. And with that being said, trade rumors is the topic of today's show, so stay tuned. Well, welcome into the Kansas City Chiefs Report. I am Harrison Graham, back with another video. We are breaking down some trade rumors today, some trade ideas, uh, some uh, somewhat reported uh, ideas circulating around the internet right now around four different players. We'll start with Trey Flowers. This idea has been floated out there by CBS Sports. They came up with three trade ideas, and they liked Flowers to the Chiefs as one of those. And... Uh, for some good reason, right? This Chiefs pass rush has certainly been terrible, to be blunt, so far this uh, year. The only reason I would blow back is Trey Flowers has not been good since 2019, and he costs a lot of money. Now, you can opt out of his contract after this year with not much penalty, but he signed that five-year, $90 million contract with Detroit prior to 2019. He was good that first year with the Lions. Last year he stunk. This year he hasn't done much. I'll be honest, I'm not that interested in Trey Flowers at this point in time. Now, I don't think he'd cost that much to get in a trade. It's just bringing on that contract that I don't want. Like, you already have some bad contracts on this roster. I'm not bringing on another one for a guy that's not an excellent pass rusher. Like, if he's getting 10, 12 sacks a year, okay, sure. But he hasn't been that player for about a year and a half now. So, not that interested in Trey Flowers. We'll talk a little bit more about him in just a second. Shout out to Magic Spoon for being one of our sponsors on today's show. If you want delicious cereal that is also very healthy, get going with Magic Spoon. I rocked with the cocoa flavor earlier this morning. Got my day started right. Magicspoon.com slash Chiefs. You guys can get $5 off your first order with Magic Spoon cereal. 13 grams of protein per serving, 4 grams of net carbs, and 0 grams of sugar. And the flavors are absolutely fantastic. It's Magicspoon.com slash Chiefs. Get going. That link will be in the comments. It'll be in the description. That way you guys can click and shop today one more time magicspoon.com slash chiefs to get going with the best cereal out there okay so you look at what trey flowers has done since the start of last season only played in seven games in 2020 he's only played in five games this year in his last 12 games he has three and a half sacks four tackles for loss and three forced fumbles that's not terrible, but that's not $18, $20 million a year, and that's what he makes with the Detroit Lions. Certainly they would eat some of that in a trade, but you're still going to be paying him well over $10 million per year. That's what your cap is going to eat up. Again, that's why I'm just not that interested in trading for Trey Flowers. Do, do the Chiefs need a pass rusher? Yes. Do they need to go add someone? Absolutely. But Trey Flowers, I think that contract makes it a little bit too difficult and a little too much for me. Should the Chiefs trade for defensive help? Type Y for yes, type N for no. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, no worries. Scroll on down, go to the pinned comment at the top of the comment section, and then reply with a Y or an N. Let's go Melvin Ingram now as we keep it rolling with our Chiefs trade rumors. Uh, Steelers are reportedly shopping Ingram. Uh, Ian Rappaport, uh, uh, I can't say reported, but mentioned the Chiefs as a potential fit. Uh, Ingram uh, visited, of course, Kansas City in the offseason. Uh, that was well documented here on the Chiefs report. He visited, uh, I can't remember if it was once or twice, for sure once, but there were uh, talks with him for a while. It ultimately never happened. He ended up signing with Pittsburgh. But I didn't mind it at the time, and I don't mind it now either. Now, you know, he hasn't done a ton, but he's only making $4 million this year, and with the season almost halfway gone, you wouldn't be sacrificing that much cap hit to go out and get a guy like Melvin Ingram. For cheap, if you can throw a sixth-round pick to Pittsburgh or something like that, that's something I might be willing to do if I'm Kansas City. Now – you're not going to get a guy that's going to come in here and have eight sacks down the stretch of the season, but he can come in, be a rotation pass rusher, and, um, and help your unit out, and that is certainly what you need. Guys, this defense is dead last in sacks. That's abysmal when you have Chris Jones and Frank Clark making a combined $40-plus million per year. You have to go get a pass rusher, uh, and maybe Melvin Ingram for cheap could be a guy that could help bolster that unit because this unit ain't getting it done. I still think Chris Jones should slide back inside, play that three technique, put Jaron Reed on the bench. He just hasn't been very good. Uh, and then go with Clark and Dana on the outside, although Frank Clark has been a disaster as well. But you simply just don't have better options at defensive end, which is why once 
once again, you need a pass rusher. It's very simple. This is the biggest need on this roster, and there are multiple needs on this roster right now. But number one, pass rusher. I think if you're Kansas City, drafting a pass rusher, by the way, next year in the draft in round one, that's going to be pretty likely, in my opinion. You've got to get someone who can get after the quarterback. But you can't worry about the drafter next year right now. You've got to worry about the here and now as this team tries to rally from a 3-4 and four start to get back to the postseason. All right, so we've talked about two veterans here. Pick one for me. Uh, who would you rather have? Type MI for Melvin Ingram. Type TF for Trey Flowers. Flowers might be a bit better, but Ingram's a lot cheaper. I would probably pick Melvin Ingram. I'm going to type my MI, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. BetUS is our sportsbook partner here at Chat Sports and at the Chiefs Report. And for you Chiefs fans only, we got a deal for you guys. Go to chatsports.com slash Chiefs Bet. Use that promo code Chiefs125. Don't tell those Raider fans. They'll steal the promo. Don't let them do that. Chatsports.com slash Chiefs Bet. Promo code Chiefs125. Betting odds for this week's game, and let's be honest, this is a must win. Chiefs 10-point favorites at home. Uh, the over-under against the Giants is 52 and a half. Hopefully Kansas City can win, man. Uh, they should be able to cover this, but the way they play this year, I don't know. I, I, I'm red hot betting the NFL this year, 16-4 and four over my last 20 games, but probably not betting on the Chiefs, I'll be honest. Chatsports.com slash Chiefs bet. Use that promo code Chiefs125. All right, next player here, Marvin Jones. Clutch points suggested that Kansas City should trade for Jones. Josh Gordon isn't getting a, a much playing time for Kansas City for whatever reason. And Hey, Marvin Jones is a proven outside wide receiver. I mean, he had several great years in Detroit. He's playing well this year for Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. I do wonder, if you're the Jags, do you want to take away a quality player like that from your rookie quarterback? I get the Jags are, are sellers, but, you know, I'd probably have to get a pretty decent offer if I'm Jacksonville for Jones, probably a day two pick. And if you're the Chiefs, do you want to give up a day two pick? Maybe. I do know this. The Chiefs, the Chiefs, the Chiefs. The Chiefs should play Josh Gordon more. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I think it's very suspicious that you would bring in a guy with his baggage and his history to basically not play him. I don't get that whatsoever. Uh, but I do like Marvin Jones quite a bit. I mean, in six games, 28 grabs, 343, and three touchdowns, those are number two type uh, receiver. Or, or, uh, that's number two wide receiver type of numbers, right? Uh, it's, you know, 60 yards a game, a touchdown every other game. That's what number two receivers do, right? He's on pace for, you know, an 800, 900-yard season and uh, about six or seven touchdowns. That's, that's kind of the name of the game for a number two wide receiver. You're not getting that production out of a McCole Hardman, out of a Br Byron Pringle. I like Pringle. I think he should play more than Hardman, to be quite honest. I would like to see Gordon get more snaps, and hopefully that ends up happening this week. But I thought it was interesting when Clutch Points mentioned Marvin Jones as a potential fit for the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, it'd be fun, but if, I think if I'm trading, I gotta trade for a defensive player. Who's the better wide receiver right now? Type MJ for Marvin Jones, type JG for Josh Gordon. Gordon's the better talent, but I don't think there's any doubt. Marvin Jones is uh, the better receiver, the more reliable player at this point. Get your votes in, MJ or JG. And finally, The Athletic uh, released one trade candidate for every single team, and I thought this was an interesting one. Mike Hughes for Kansas City. Uh, the reason I found it interesting is, one, not that big of a name, obviously, and two, what are you going to get for Mike Hughes? I mean, let's be honest. Uh, Hughes has not str played well really since week one, um, but especially the last month he has struggled. Uh, Legereus Sneed and Rashad Fenton have certainly been better. Uh, this is what this is a somewhat interesting note. If you trade him, you do save two million in cap space. So I guess that could be nice uh, to roll that money over for next year. Uh, but this guy has stunk since week one. He was really good in the preseason. He was good in training camp. I was like, wow, uh, they might have revitalized this former first round pick from Minnesota when they trade for him. I was like, why are you trading for Mike Hughes? Well, the, they they didn't revitalize him. Let's let's put it let's put it like that. He is not a starting caliber corner, although he's basically been your starting nickel for most of this season. Season. And after Legereus Sneed, you just have not gotten that good a play at corner, and even he hasn't been great. He's playing a little better as of late, uh, as is Rashad Fenton, who's uh, kind of been that CB2. Him and Ward, with Ward banged up, have kind of been rotating in and out there uh, at that spot. But, uh, 
yeah, Mike Hughes is just not giving you much. So if you could get a sixth or seventh round pick for him, sweet. Like, I'm down because uh, I don't think he's going to be a guy you're going to be re-signing re anyway, and he's a free agent after this season. So those are four guys uh, being connected to some Chiefs trade rumors at the moment. So we'll see what ends up happening. And I can tell you this, if the Chiefs make a trade, we're going to cover it right on this channel. Link right there, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Don't miss any of our coverage leading up to the NFL trade deadline next Tuesday. A couple more videos throughout the week, and then uh, it's game day, baby. Game day against the Giants on Monday Night Football, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see you guys soon here on the Chiefs Report.